Now let's talk about how to find the domain of a function. If you're given a function written in equation form, here's how you find the domain. First, start with the set of all real numbers. Then, identify any restrictions on the input and exclude those values from the domain. So what we mean is go through, look at all of the different values that you can input. If there is a value that you cannot input, make sure you take those away from the, um, exclude those from your domain. And again, the domain of a function, we defined it as all of the possible input values. And then the third step is to write your domain in interval form or using set builder notation. I'm completely fine with you using whatever works the best for you. And I actually switch back and forth myself um, based on whatever the scenario is. So if we were asked to find the domain of the following functions, f of x equals the square root of seven minus two x. Following our steps. Step one, start with the set of all real numbers. Step two, identify any restrictions on the input and exclude those values from the domain. So looking at this function, it's the square root function. Remember whenever you have a root with an even index, so if you're taking the square root, the fourth root, the sixth root, the eighth root, etc., we cannot um, take the square root, or again, a root of even index of a negative number. So whatever you're taking the root of, must be bigger than or equal to zero. Again, we have to exclude any values that are going to make this negative because it's not going to be defined. If I try to take the square root of negative four, there's no solution. Solving this for x, I'm going to subtract seven from both sides and I'm left with negative two x is greater than or equal to negative seven. And now to get the x by itself, divide both sides by negative two. Remember, when you divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality sign. So I get that x has to be less than or equal to 7 halves to make this a valid function. I can check to make sure I've done it right by letting x equal a number that's less than or equal to 7 halves, which would be, for example, 0. 7 minus 2 times 0 is 7, and the square root of 7 is a valid answer. It's the square root of 7. Okay, so when I write this, I can write it in interval or set builder notation. I'll do both for you right now, just so you can practice it. So for interval notation, interval you always write the smallest number to the left and the largest number to the right. So for values that are less than or equal to 7 halves, the smallest value that x can take on is negative infinity. And we always use a parenthesis there for infinities because we can never actually equal infinity. And then the largest values that the x, x's can take on is 7 halves. And we can actually equal 7 halves because of that less than or equal sign. And the way that you notate that in interval notation is by using a bracket. I do have a link to a video that reviews interval notation at the end of this video. So if you are needing to review that from previous classes, use that link. Now, if I were to write this in set builder notation, So it'd be the set of all x values such that x is less than or equal to 7 halves. All right, next example. So here I have a rational function, and that's where I have, it's basically written as a fraction. We're going to talk about rational functions in depth once we hit chapter 3. But the, if I start with the set of all real numbers and then identify any restrictions, so the only time that this function is going to be undefined is when the denominator equals zero because we cannot divide by zero. So let's see what those values are going to be. So what's going to make this equal zero? So here I have a quadratic. I can solve this by either factoring it or by the quadratic formula. And again, if you need a little bit of prerequisite help on factoring, I do have a video link at the end of this video that'll take you to a quick Khan Academy video over that. So when I get this, I get that x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. So those are the two values that are going to make this denominator equal 0. 
I need to make sure that I exclude those values because that's going to make this function undefined. When I write the domain, I can write it. I'm going to first actually write this in set builder notation. So if you were writing this in set builder notation, it's all values of x such that x cannot equal negative 2 and x cannot equal 3. All other values of x I could plug into this function and get an actual output, except if I substitute in negative 2 or if I substitute in 3. Now if I wrote this using interval notation, so we would have the values from negative infinity to negative 2, and I'm not including negative 2. I'm going to use this little union symbol because that means it's going to be combined with all of the values from negative 2 to 3 and then from 3 to infinity. So this whole interval shows that I have all of the values um, in the real number system except for negative 2 and 3. And if you see that kind of on a number line, we, were, um, we needed to exclude those two values so you can see this kind of separates it into three different intervals. For this one, it's from negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 3, and 3 to infinity. So if it's easier, you can go ahead and write things out like that. Okay, the last example is p of x equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. Looking at this, we'll set, start out with the set of all real numbers. And then I have to see if there's any restrictions. So do I have any um, even index roots. So the square roots, fourth roots, the answer to that is no. So we don't have to worry about that. The only other time you're going to have values that you'll have to exclude from the domain in these cases right now are any values that are going to make the denominator equal zero. Well, I don't even have a fraction here, like a rational function, so I don't have to worry about that. So there are no values that I have to exclude. I can put in any value for x and I'm going to actually get an output value. So in this case, our um, domain is the set of all real numbers. We can write that using set builder notation as x such that x is an element or is any real number. Or you can write that in interval notation as any number from negative infinity to infinity.